yo, yo, episode eight, back in the building. <laughs> yeah. Episode eight, ladies and gentlemen. You know me, uh, Shayla, aka Shay Money, aka First Take Shay. Uh huh. You got me, Dele, aka Diamond Boy, aka Golden Boy. Okay. For sure. Golden Diamond. All right. Yep. What's going on? What's, what's happening? Yeah. Uh, the latest news for me is uh, Elon trying yeah. to uh, yeah. oh my trying to buy Twitter. Yeah. Um, I like the move. What you think? I thought it was, I thought it was a good move. So like initially, like there was like a news uh article saying that like I think he he was like the largest stakeholder yeah in Twitter. and that's and that's yeah. where like the um it started going up because of that mm-hmm. but once he put that out there mm-hmm. Twitter started going down oh, really yeah 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 it was okay. it was like it was negative I thought uh-huh. it was going to be positive but I guess well he said if he ends up buying it he's yeah. gonna make it a private company right so, so it's, it's not even lo- no longer going to be listed um yeah, as a stock so whoever owns um Twitter should definitely watch closely. Um, on what's gonna happen? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like you know any if it does happen, mm-hmm. you know those who hold Doge, mm. Tesla, mm. any of those things. Yeah, I think it's gonna. Yeah, um, yeah for sure. Yeah, spike it's, up for sure. It's it's like crazy, like to think how you know because they say if you can control media, like you have power. Exactly. Because like. When the whole thing with Trump going on and things like that, and they silenced him, bro, I haven't heard from Trump in like fact. since then fact. because you don't have a Twitter. So fact, it's like, fact, fact. you know what I mean? So if you can, so like, I, yo, I respect Elon so much, the mm-hmm. vision yeah. that he had to be able to, like, to be able to see that and be like, yo, Twitter is where it's at. Like, yeah. that's where the media is. That's where you, that's where you get the most exposure, the expression, mm-hmm. other than, um, First of all, I just downloaded TikTok today because I'm hearing, you know, what uh, I mean? that's, yeah. where, that's, yeah, where that's where it's at. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's where the, you know, the exposure really is. But to say like, yo, I'm I'm buying mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Twitter. To, first of all, to be able to do that is powerful. I think it's like what ninety three billion. Thing. Nah, he said forty three billion. Forty three billion. Forty three billion. Yeah. I said what? Yeah. Just like that. So that was like, yeah, that was really uh really powerful. I don't think it's gonna um happen, but they did say they. <laughs> I don't know if it was like rumors or whatever, but they said like if they don't accept the deal, he's gonna pull pull out, pull out. his investments I think he would. or whatever. He's being petty. He's, like that. <laughs> he's being petty, but I think he would. It's a business. You know what I mean? It's a business move. Yeah, I mean, so. yeah, it's definitely gonna go down if he uh if he pulls out and things like that. Cause soon as people found out that he was, you know, it was going up. So who I mean, who knows? Who knows? Yeah, what you got? What else? I mean, the crazy so like recently I started um I was like, this month, I'm going to start a new read. Mm. So I've been reading uh, the 21 Best uh, Cash Flow. Man, insightful. Mm. Reading it, I, I, I read one, one niche every day mm. and things like that. It, it's crazy. The, the crazy game, one um, one that I wanted to talk about was music royalties. Mm. And um, so like back in 85, Michael Jackson brought like majority of the catalog of the Beatles for like... 47 million, right? Seven years after he died, I want to say it was 2009. So seven years later, Sony slash ATV went and purchased the the remaining uh, state for like 750 million. And right now, the Beatles catalog is worth, um, exceeds 1 billion. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, when when I was reading those different niches, I was like, yo... It's crazy opportunities like this, the stock market, real estate. That's not the only game. There's so many different games from, you know, vending machines, ATMs, mm-hmm. uh, music royalties. Because I'm thinking like, you know, when you stream something, the the artist is just not getting paid. No, the production company, yeah, they're getting their money, mm-hmm. whoever. Because one of the things that they mentioned in the book was that a lot of these artists can't really get a loan from the bank or whatever yeah. or things like that. So. That's what they use as leverage mm-hmm. to raise capital to do whatever they want to do. So I, I was like, oh, wow, that's that's another because you got to think about it. When Michael, when Michael Jackson died, they said um, just from just from uh, direct sales and royalties alone, they made four hundred and ninety four million dollars. The royalties went up 70 percent after his death. And I mean, like. You know, even Jada Kiss once said, you know, the dad rappers get better promotion or whatever Fact. and things like that. So it's like 
you know, who's controlling those royalties, who's, you know, making sure. And that's, I think that's what, you know, ownership ties into it and, and that whole thing and things like that. So it's definitely different gems to, uh, you know what I mean, hand out. It's, it's, it's a million ways to get it. So, you know, just keeping an open mind to that. Right, right. Word. Well, today we have a special guest. Yes, yes. On the show. Mm-hmm. Nia Patterson. Welcome. Thank Welcome. you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Let's 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 uh take a shot. Cheers. 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 Episode, Episode eight. eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Naya, tell tell the audience about yourself. Hey everybody, my name is Naya. I currently live in Maryland. I'm a licensed realtor for the state of Maryland. I'm a student success coach. I'm a self-published author of a affirmations journal and I'm an investor um, and just one seeking to learn and grow in all ways. So I'm excited to be here with y'all. Thanks, thanks. Side note, we all went to high school together. We yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sickler Ville native. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to the Ville. First of all, shout out to the Ville. We um, we oh, are junior, uh, prom. junior prom. We all linked up and uh, met up. Yeah, yeah. At, yes. At Funny thing is, um, I posted on Instagram today, but we was uh on the uh what's the, the wing contest? We all the finished. wing eating yeah, contest. Yeah, yeah. I still have that t shirt <laughs> to this day. I still I have, have bright, my wing the eating contest. The bright orange t shirt. Yeah, I, I have t shirt. But we won, though. We won that. She was on the team? No, nah, no. Nah. Nah, I was not on y'all's yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we just took a picture together, though. Oh, she was on the we team. We had some good times yeah, at yeah, TC. Yeah, we also, um, I think it was junior year that summer, she had a Yes, I had a pool party, bonfires. Y'all used to come over. We used to have so much fun. Yeah, I used to go to, um, I used to. Just to go to your uh, pool parties a lot. Yes. Yeah, I, re- I remember. Yeah. Yeah, I remember those times. Dang. Y'all always came cool. through. Show yeah, love. Yeah, always yeah, had a good sure. time. For sure. Yeah, so let's get into it. <laughs> um, so let's probably... Where do I want to start from? Probably post... Well, after college? I'm mean, yeah. at high school? Yeah. Yeah, let's talk about post high school. So yeah, yeah, yeah. what school did you go to? I went to St. Augustine's University. Okay. It's an HBCU okay. in Raleigh. Yes, yeah, okay. shout out to HBCUs. She graduated um, from HBCU, right? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, went there straight after high school, all four years. Um, and Raleigh was Raleigh was a good time, different from Jersey for sure, but um, super grateful for that HBCU experience. Would never, ever, ever trade it or think about um, going anywhere else. So I'm glad that I did. And then straight from there, I moved to Maryland to go to the University of Maryland. And then I've been in Maryland ever since. So it's been like, it'll be six years this July. So Maryland was like grad school? Maryland for grad school. Oh, yes, 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 yes. What did you study in undergrad? So undergrad, I studied criminal justice. Oh, okay. So I did not want to be a police officer. Mm-hmm. But at the time, I thought that that was like, my best way to understand like the government and criminal justice system. Um, And then when I was in college, I worked a lot with like youth and I learned a lot about the juvenile justice system and how that overlaps with the educational system, you know, the school to prison pipeline. So then I really, really got interested in like those two overlapping worlds, like the education system, the juvenile justice system. And then I decided to go to the University of Maryland to get my master's in public mm-hmm. policy because of a class that I took my senior year, basically on public policy and, mm-hmm. you know, dealing with those systems. So I was just like, well, I'm going to go mm-hmm. get this next degree, I guess, and, right. you know, take this further. Um, so I did that. I specialized in education policy. Mm-hmm. And then from there, I just stayed in like education, family programming programs that did a little bit of policy stuff or like advocacy, but never anything like truly on the policy policy level because I'm such a like direct service, want to have like, I want to be able to touch people and see the people that I'm touching and impacting. So that policy level, although it's important, it was more important for me to start on that level because I don't believe in people like, just being overhead dictating Mm -hmm. and making policies, but they've never been on the front lines, worked with people, talked to people, or like actually know what's going on. So that's the route that I took initially. um, And I've made some transitions from there, kind of added things to my 
portfolio or interest since there, but um, I am still working in education. I'm a student success coach at a community mm-hmm. college. So, oh, nice. Nice. yeah. Nice. Question. So what was your, what's one of your favorite things about going to an HBCU? Mm-hmm. Honestly, I mean, okay, because we all went to high school together and kind of like grew up around here. So going to an HBCU was, well, I don't want to say it's like the first time everybody looked like me, but Mm -hmm. going to an HBCU really like shined a light on black excellence. Mm -hmm. Like it was just us, and not us against us, but it was just like us looking like each other and like all really striving and thriving to be excellent, like to achieve. It just felt so good. It just felt so like rich and Mm -hmm. I don't know how to explain it. Like what would you say? Yeah, uh, funny enough, because I went to Kane with yeah, the yeah, guys, yeah. or at a PWI, you feel like a number, but yeah. um, at the HBCU, they kind of embrace you, yeah. almost. Yeah. And, you know, some of the um, advisors or the leaders of the school would always try to plug you in. So I was meeting, like, mayors, mm. going to conferences. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah, it was crazy. Like, oh, they wow. try to really push for you oh, there. Wow. Mm-hmm. So, and I can say, like, wow, like. You know, the people I was meeting, I would never have met. Yeah, if, I yeah, if it wasn't met. for... You know, so... That's facts. You know, I always try to, you know... Now I try to push people to go to an HBCU. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. it really makes a difference, you know what I mean? So, wow. Yeah, I, ne- I never went to... I, I never went to yeah. HBCU. Yeah, yeah, always PWI. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I, sure. I think, like... I think, like, my experience at, like, Kane was, like... Everybody call it Kane, so I'm just say Kane. <laughs> yeah, like, I, was, I mean, I was which one is it? Yeah. It's really Kane. It's really, it's really Kane. Kane. Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, everybody, yeah. Say everybody say Kane. Everybody say Kane. I say yeah. Kane. I swore it was Kane. <laughs> no, wow. No, 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 it's really Kane. Yeah, but everybody say Kane, man. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Even if you go to that, yeah. so I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say Kane. Right? I know it's not you know for me correct, but it is Kane. But <laughs> but yeah, like I don't know, like it it is a, like a PWI, but like I don't know, like the the group of like the you know like the black people there yeah is so like it, it's yeah. so strong it's yeah. so nice yeah, sure. and things like that That's like true. i didn't really i i didn't really feel like i was at like a pwi mm. like mm. like all my supervisors and things like that they were black mm. like you know what i mean like people like that i had to like report to or whatever they were black of course like the, the teachers the professors and stuff like that wasn't really black but yeah. um but yeah, like it was, it was definitely a. Um, but then, like when I went to even more PWIs, like Rutgers, Camden, and now Drexel, like now I'm like, oh, this is definitely like a PWI, and I feel it. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. Shout out to Coppin State for sure. Um. I gotta give my school a shout out <laughs> before, before the uh, they start barking at me. Um, okay, so uh, we went from. Your HBCU to grad mm-hmm. school. Mm-hmm. Um, now, let's talk about uh, post grad. Yeah. So, are you? I guess you got your first job after. After grad school was okay. like, yeah, my first full time job. Like, work just doing that because in grad school I was, I was like doing a graduate assistantship and internships and stuff like that. But yeah, like my actual and I can't even say nine to five because I worked at a nonprofit and I had an amazing like flexible schedule. Um, I worked like we had core working hours of 10 to 2 and then it was just like whatever I could fit my appointments, whatever, whatever, in whatever schedule I wanted. But anyway, yeah, so I worked at a nonprofit for like two and a half years after um, graduating from University of Maryland. Mm -hmm. And then I um, transitioned to a charter school. I worked in um, D.C., as a family and community engagement manager at a charter school, and then more recently transitioned back to like the higher ed side, which is like what I was doing at the um, nonprofit. And now I'm a student success coach there um, as my nine to five. Okay. So how has your experience so far as a nine to five been for a millennial? Um, let's talk about it. Yeah, let's talk about it. <laughs> it's cool, but... Um, I personally, and I think that y'all would agree, 
I personally have no desire, <laughs> none, zero, zilch, no desire to work at a nine to five until I'm supposed to retire. Like that's not the night, the life for me. I'm going to drink to that one. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's not the life for me, and everybody who knows me knows that. So, yeah, that's just I'm I'm doing what I'm supposed to do and making the impact that I'm mm. that I'm you know set out to make in every place that I'm that I've been at and every place that I'm going to be. But um, you know, while I'm at these nine to five traditional workplaces, but. Um, that's not where I wish to stay for life. Okay, so was it always, did you always think this way or is it? That's a good question. Okay. I definitely, mm, I want to say that I didn't always think that way. And not to say like, I was just like a happy go lucky. I'm going to go, <laughs> I'm going to go work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just can't wait to go work for somebody. Yeah. But, um, you know, we go to school, get your degree. So we're talking. Right. You know, go work and build yourself up. Like climb originally, mm -hmm. you know, you climb the ladder. Originally, that's what you're told. Mm -hmm. And I was a very, you know, follow the rules, make my family proud. Mm -hmm. So I'm mm -hmm. I'm doing these things. Yeah. And then in grad school, I'm like, okay, you know, this is cool. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm about to get my master's degree. That's cool. Mm -hmm. And I started feeling like I can't. I, could have maybe when I went without this degree, but that's mm. cool. I'm here now. We're good. Um, and I started, it was in grad school where I started, and I don't know how, but it was in grad school when I started um, researching real estate investing, like mm. ordering books, going to meetups, wow. like just learning. Cause I'm like this, I need more. Yeah. I need more. Mm -hmm. This is not, this is not it. I got to do more. So, um, I don't know how I really, I, I'm struggling to remember like how, like, or what first Spark that. sparked it mm -hmm. for me, but, um, wholesaling was the very first thing that I like that came across that was brought to me. Mm -hmm. Um, so I like was looking into that for a while. Then I was looking into like mobile home investing. Oh, wow. So just like all of this in my world in like 2018, I'm just like researching, researching, researching. Mm -hmm. um, but, and I graduated with my master's in 2018. So, you know, just kind of like still have my eyes open to it, but was going through the motions of like going to work, yeah. getting a job and enjoying that space too, because right. I really enjoyed the work that I was doing yeah. and am doing. So did you like, did you get involved with like wholesaling? So no, mm -hmm. I did not. Um, I, like I said, I went to meetups, I read books, listened to podcasts, like talked to people, did all of those things, consumed all this information, but never took any mm -hmm. jumps, like was too scared to take any leaps. So I never did it. Why, why didn't you? I was just... I was scared. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> I was, I was, that's just truly what it comes down to fear. And I'm like, Oh, I'm a girl. Mm -hmm. I got to pick up the phone and talk to people. Mm -hmm. I got to drive for dollars. Like mm -hmm. I was, I, yeah, I was just like looking at all the things and letting fear eat me up. Mm -hmm. And that's something to this day that I've like slowly been breaking through that barrier of, yeah. um, but that definitely like had me in a chokehold. That's the thing to say now. <laughs> so, stuff has you in a chokehold, but like fear really had me in a chokehold and I did not make any moves with it. Yeah. Um, now that I'm in real estate as a realtor, mm -hmm. I feel so much. And that's one of the reasons that I wanted to become a real estate agent. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to keep playing with myself anymore. I'm a, I'm a flip to the other side and get mm -hmm. comfortable in this field. I'm mm -hmm. going to learn because that's, that's what's comfortable for me. Mm -hmm. Like other people, they are comfortable just jumping out and being an investor first, which mm -hmm. is, I totally like support that. But for me, I'm like, okay, I'm not as comfortable just kind of doing that. I'm not very risky, risky, risky. But, mm -hmm. um, so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to do this from like the educational, learning, getting a license side, because mm -hmm. that's what's, that's what's comfortable for me. And I'm going to learn this field on both sides, inside and out, get comfortable with the language, get comfortable with talking to people, get comfortable with contracts and deals and stuff like that. And then there's going to be no stopping me or like saying what I can do or can't do because I know it. Mm -hmm. And so like, that's what feels 
good to me. And so I've had my real estate license for a year now and it's feeling good and like I'm getting a rhythm and I know that although I haven't done any investment deals for myself yet, like I'm going to be a real estate investor. I'm in houses every day. I'm talking mm-hmm. to people every day. I'm talking to investors. I have access to people. Yeah. So like it's it's just a matter of time for me at this point. And I did it from the side that felt comfortable to me. Yeah. And I think that would be like really, um, really good because now like you're building up that clientele. Mm-hmm. You you're building up those connections that if you do decide to go back to wholesaling, and things like that, you have that, you know, connection and things like that and plugs and things like that. Yeah. If, if because you have that contact of investors and things mm-hmm. like, hey, I got a deal, you know, exactly. and, and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because like wholesaling, like, like, you know, reading about it and things like that is definitely appealing. I even It's thought, so appealing. Yeah, and then like, yeah, <laughs> you see you these people, nothing down. Nothing down. you don't put nothing yeah. down. Yeah. It's really just, you putting the work down it's and like it's you. doable. Yeah. It's so yeah. doable. And I was, like, I was on the same wave. Yeah. Months. months. Just yeah. taking all this information yeah. and then, yeah. then I'm dialing yeah. the number on my phone. I'm like, mm, I mean, I'm going to do this later. <laughs> you shot to one client. Yeah. I was trying to get, you know, get in contact. Um, and it just wasn't working out. I was shook. Yeah, After yeah. That one instant, yeah, right. I want to learn another way. So yeah. yeah, I heard it's like a lot of cold calling. And, it is you know, just, just you know, putting up signs like "We'll buy your your house or homes or whatever like that and things like that." Yeah, but I mean, it's it's definitely like it's definitely a good move. No money down, and yeah. with technology and stuff, like you don't just have to do um, cold calls. You can you know drive for dollars and look mm. for distressed properties, find the owner. Um, send them a letter, an email, a text message. Yeah. You know, you got, but you got to be a little careful because I know when I receive text messages, your number is blocked or like I'm deleting, yeah. I'm not clicking the link or whatever. So, I mean, I always think like, I know I'm not about to answer no text message. So I probably won't feel comfortable sending text messages out. But, you know, there's ways you can go about it. You can knock on doors, send, send letters and stuff like that. Um, but yeah. That's just one of, like you were saying, that's just one way. There's right. so many, so many yeah. ways. Because I, I remember, um, like in the beginning, when I, when I first bought my uh, condo, I would go to the, I would go to the mailbox and receive like, oh, we'll buy your home for mm-hmm. you know, this like, <laughs> random people calling me. I'm like, yo, how'd you, how'd you right? Get how do you number? get yeah, this? How do you, how do you get my number? But yeah, it's all public record. That's yeah, they, they know like you can search it and be like, okay, this person bought it or. Because a lot of times they'll like the strategy is if if like somebody die and they're inherited, mm-hmm. they might reach out to the person that inherited that don't really want it. So then they you know lowball them or whatever and things like that. So it's it's definitely it is definitely keys out there. Like, yeah, I want to touch on um, something she said. Fear, mm. you know, it's it's, deep. it's, it's, it's deep. Listen, it's, deep. it's not as deep, you know. And I like the fact that you didn't let it. Um, control or narrate, yeah. you know, you from really doing what you want to do. I yeah, still found it. I found another way that felt way. comfortable. I think yeah. then you, you, I remember you tweeted something or something like that that I had retweeted. It was like if you fear losing or like you, you're not trying to win. Or yeah. it, it was, something, yeah. it was something like that. I was like, yo, that that's true. Like, facts. yeah, real facts. Like if if you fear like of losing, you'll never win. You'll yeah. never win. You'll and you don't deserve win. to win, honestly. Yeah. That, for real. I was listening to Eric Thomas <laughs> today <laughs> giving me hype on my drive from uh Maryland this morning. And he said, winners win and losers lose. And I was just like, that's it. Cause if, if you're <laughs> you can't, you can't you you don't it doesn't get more simple than that. Yeah. If you wanna win, you'll win. Yeah. If you focus on losing, you're, you're gonna, gonna lose, lose my guy. Right up. <laughs> <laughs> so and and that's me to me like so yeah I had to just I had to find another way and it's all about finding your way and I'm still yeah. just finding my way yeah. but like you know getting comfortable being uncomfortable but also like doing it in my comfortable way if yeah. that makes sense that's, and honestly it's really okay to to lose yeah. yes I had to People get I had so to learn that to, it's, it's all right <laughs> it's okay it's all right you know what I mean like you'll bounce back you'll yeah, learn we'll get it back. and it will even be a loss yeah. it'll be a lesson yeah you feel me oh my so a lot of people are you gotta take yeah it and that's you yeah. need that to, to yeah get the w. that's Yo, fact the crazy thing is like the successful people have more losses than yes the average person because they took those chances and, and that's what it is you know all you're, gonna lose. Like, you're gonna lose you're gonna lose you're gonna have to lose you have to yeah you know i mean yeah 
That's so what do you scary. think? So what was your first? So you did your nine to five, right? What was your first like side hustle or mm. like what was the first <sighs> branch out to you know what? I'm gonna do my own thing or my first side. I'm gonna try hustle. to build this empire to the side. <laughs> I mean, my first side hustle. I like so, and I have. Well, I don't. I don't consider myself like a creative or anything. So, mm -hmm. but I there was a time where like I would do DIY projects and like mm -hmm. customize jackets and like stuff like that. But that's that was very small um, and short lived. <laughs> and I, don't have, I don't have time like yeah. I want to do stuff that's going to make me money while I'm sleeping yeah. and then later enjoy the stuff that like yeah. I could put my hands on but um so I actually did forex mm -hmm. I I traded you said that. Yeah, yeah 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 so um and I do still but I don't do day trading right now just because I have too much other stuff going on and I'm really trying to focus on real estate right now mm -hmm. so my and just a quick like no, a problem that I've had was like wanting to do so many different things yeah. at the same time that I was never propelling in one thing mm. yeah. because I I'm, right, right, right. can't be a jack of all trades. Yeah. Like spreading yourself out too thin. Spreading myself yeah, out too yeah, thin, yeah, trying yeah, to do everything yeah. at once. So um, I don't day trade right now. I only like buy and hold, but still like currencies or foreign, like you can still um, buy and hold foreign currencies just yeah. like you buy and hold stocks yeah. or crypto yeah. so like that's what i do but i don't do the day-to-day -day, day trading anymore because i don't have time to keep up with it how, how did you get into that so honestly like the rest of us i saw people on instagram and i was like hmm are they so really they making me. money they got me i got got but i learned the skill okay. and no you don't have to join i am academy or anybody's well, you don't. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, you don't. okay I'm saying it here for yeah. the people. <laughs> you don't have to join I Am Academy um, to learn trading, but I will say I personally met amazing, amazing people that I'm like still friend, like business woman, boss babes, yeah. and guys too who are like amazing business people and like have been super successful in trading um, and like are doing so many other great things too. So I've met amazing people, but I actually did learn from the Academy. They, ha they do actually have a great um like a great course mm -hmm. that li literally takes you from the basics of trading mm. to advanced trading yeah. and so you know it it it's unfortunate that like it came off as like oh you have to recruit and that's the only way people are making money yeah. that yeah. is not true for some people it was true okay. but behind mm -hmm. the academy you really do get to learn the skill set yeah. Um, so I did learn a skill that now I know for the rest of my life. And when I have time to sit down, um, I'm going to like, I know that that's a skill that I can, that can feed me income. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? When I can get back to it. Yeah. Like why, why do you think that it received that negative type of? <sighs> because, because of social media, because we're young, because we're not always honest on social media, like you know, we're, we're flashing the, the, the money or the cars or the fast money. Yeah. And like, we're not being transparent about like, you know, the hours that you put in studying to learn the skill yeah. or like the money that you lost. Like yeah, yeah. I've had a 1k account that's grown from 8k and I've lost it yeah. and I've got it back and I've lost it again. Like nobody's being transparent about uh, any of that stuff. And yeah. so, you know, it's, it's just the, the shiny, what do they call it? Shiny mirror, whatever, whatever it's called. But like, it's just like flashy and that's yeah. attractive on social media and whatever else. But um, so that's where that bad rep is coming from. Cause now you're joining and you're expecting to have instant gratification, instant success right. because nobody was like honest with you about having to learn the skill behind it because it's a real skill. Like yeah. old white men are trading and making yeah. money and have been for years. Like it's exactly. not a secret y'all. We can, we, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like it's, yeah. this is not illegal. It is a real thing, but it just, we, we gave it a bad rep. I don't, yeah. I don't even think that. Well, I, a lot of people took it and ran with it. You know? Yeah, as a they was like, thing. yo, I can make mad money off of bringing other people in. Yeah. So that's what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna tell them that's the main way they make money. Yeah. yeah. And it wasn't the truth. The message should have been: come with us, learn it, right, and do it on your own, and then teach whoever you can teach. Yeah. yeah. And I had amazing people who like actually did teach me. So that was the thing too. Like it was, it was kind of who you were connected to, who was bringing you in. Because if whoever brought you in was flashy, flashy and 
wasn't didn't really know the skill, but they were just bringing people in because they knew people or could network good, well. Yeah, had a good, uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then like you probably were attached to somebody who didn't know the skill. I was fortunate enough to be attached to people who know the skill, and now I know mm-hmm. the skill. Yeah, I think where they messed up um, to me was the aggressiveness. Of kind of <laughs> that people. too. You know I, mean? I've I never. I feel yeah. Like people who are really getting money. They're not mm-hmm. going to be in my DMs. Yeah, yeah, trying to, about something. yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to like, bring me in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and that was my problem. Like, this, like I should be going, they should be coming to me right, right. rather than exactly. me going to them trying this, to recruit. This, have you ever seen um, Sorry to Bother You? No. Nah. He was like, a, um, he was like, he worked at the call center. Uh, I forget his name, but he yeah. was in Get Out. You know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah. he was in Get Out. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he was the one that. He was in Atlanta um, too. Yeah, mm. in Atlanta too, right? Yeah. Um, and one of the things that uh, someone put him game to, mm-hmm. he was like, "You gotta act like you already got it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like you don't need to be here." Yeah. And that's how you really recruit somebody because, yeah. like, you're showing all these flashy things mm-hmm. in the cars mm-hmm. and things mm-hmm. like that. And then you be like, "All right, if you want to join, you know, come with me." Mm-hmm. But it's not like a because when I first seen it, I was like, I was like, "Dang, why they seem like real like." Like they really want me to, you know, uh-huh. join and things like that. And I always and I always thought like, oh, it's a scam, da 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 and whatever. But then then like now I'm looking at it, you know, after, you know, some reading and research that, you know, sometimes it's like the systematic where they want you to think that the only mm. way to get money is to work hard, mm-hmm. get a good job, retire. So it was like, oh, these people are the the bad people. They want to get around the system. They're lazy or, you know, just put any type of um, negative things that, you know, they want to say on it and things like that. So that's when, you know, before I had, you know, that kind of mindset, I was like, oh, no, I'm staying. <laughs> but like, like yeah. you know, sometimes like you just really got to respect the hustle. Like, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Like, sure. yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I necessarily, like, I get it how somebody wouldn't want to join because, like, of the the pyramid of it and mm-hmm. things yeah, like that. Right. So, but, like, the skill the that, skill set, exactly. the skill set that's mm-hmm. being taught is really valuable and really, mm-hmm. like, because the average person really, because I've seen it, the discord, like, the, the, the charts and all, mm-hmm. I'm like, I have no idea what you're yeah, talking sure. about. Yeah, but, like, the skill set that's being taught is really important. I think yes. You know, Do you think, okay. from your experience, um, more people have made money um, in Forex from actually trading or recruiting? Mm. <sighs> more people? Mm, I would say more people have probably made money from trading because there's, there's a handful who are like at the top of the top of the top. Okay. But you can you can make money like as soon as you enter a trade, like it's just so that's quick. True, so true, true. every every single body can make. Well, okay. So you mean the most money? Yeah. That's I don't know. That's hard to say because you know it all depends like what you're starting your account with. That's true, that's Some people like people who got it. Yeah. They got 10k yeah. accounts yeah. that they're flipping. Um, but you can still do a lot with a fifty dollar account. You can compound. Yeah. How how is the like um like the taxes with that like how. So, yes. So, um, you, mm, the taxes are interesting because back in like 2020 and I think, yeah, for sure 2020, like the IRS didn't yet Mm. necessarily like classify you as a trader unless you made a certain like threshold. So like that's when you were taxed, when you were, you were taxing you were being taxed once you like made a certain was that threshold. Was uh, mm, no. I don't know. Okay. But um, but you can like also file for your profits and your losses mm-hmm. and all of that. So like I, yeah. I do that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Nice. Okay. So, I, so it's forex. I like the noise has died down for me. So is it still an ongoing, ongoing thing? Or I feel like as a whole. You know, nobody's really talking about yeah. forex no more. Yeah, so it's definitely a thing as far as is everybody still trading, either day trading, buying and holding, or something. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, I I truly don't know, mm-hmm. like what people are doing with IM Academy because it has mm-hmm. quiet yeah. quieted down, yeah. and 
I've had my head in my real estate space. Okay. So I really, I truly don't know. It's, it's definitely still a popping thing because as y'all were talking about like Twitter and um, with the war going on, like oil, gold, like all of that stuff. The, the cool thing about trading currencies is that like, mm. which, which is different than stocks to a certain extent because you can you can make money whether you're selling or buying but like for a stock you obviously want it to go up yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah mm. you know it's funny <laughs> is it funny yeah it's funny <laughs> um some girl she was always trying to get me to to um to join to join <laughs> and i used to post things and she used to just comment yeah um she, i'm trying to remember what exactly she told me she was like um she said, are you into investing or whatever? Mm-hmm. Or whatever. I said, yeah. I said, you know, stop. She said, oh, you only make money when you're, um, when it goes up. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, but that's not, not all the way true because, you know, people can make, um, what they call it? Um, you saw options? Exactly. Oh, yeah, options. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So she's like, yeah, well, we make money when it goes up or down. I'm like, you know what I mean? But I just laugh. Like, whatever. <laughs> Um, so after, uh, Forex, oh, when did you start investing? Um, I knew you went to Bitcoin. And, yes. And so, things, so, um, she got, she got a lot of coins oh, in, yeah. the, in, in the wallet. All right. Where, where you at? Like what, what app you use? Uh, so my, the very first app I ever used was Coinbase okay. and my uncle put me on to Bitcoin I remember, I can never, I think it was either when I graduated college, like in 20, right? In 2016. Oh, wow. So. I'm going to drink to that one. I'm going to drink to (laughs) that (laughs) one. Listen, but let let, let me tell y'all, let me tell y'all. So my my uncle put me on. It's getting hot here now. (laughs) He put me on in 2016 and like, my uncle, he's always. He's always into something. So like, (laughs) (laughs) this is my mom's brother and I love him to death. And he's like a younger uncle, like Mm -hmm. um, in my 20s. So he's like, he's like in his late 30s now. So, um, you know, he he was always into like, you know, flipping and like Mm -hmm. quick money and stuff. So Mm -hmm. when I'm first hearing from him about crypto and Bitcoin, I'm like, I don't know what this is, but... He, he does know what he's talking about, but I don't know what he's talking about right, at the right, same right, time. Right. I don't know. So I only invested a little bit. Okay. He invested a lot. Oh, right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he invested a lot mm-hmm. and got a lot from it. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, sold it all, I oh, guess, wow. a year or whatever. Yeah. So mm-hmm. ago. But he basically he was the very first person to like open my eyes to this. So. Mm-hmm. You know, being scary. I'm like, all right, I'm going to listen to what you're saying, but I'm going to only do a little bit. So I did a little bit. Um, But yeah, Coinbase is where I like bought Bitcoin for the first time after you told me. This is like 2016. Because that's when we graduated um, college. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 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 So I was on Coinbase. Um, Jeez. Wow. Wow. Um, So Coinbase, I love crypto.com, but I've only been on crypto.com, I guess. I don't know. That's that's a newer thing. So maybe like the last two years mm-hmm. or year, year and a half, year, year to year, whatever. Um, so Coinbase, Crypto.com. I'm on public. I only have a few things on public. I know I have Microsoft on public. Um, what else? I feel like I'm missing one. Coinbase. Oh, of course I have Robinhood. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm trying to think of any more crypto specific ones. I love crypto.com. I don't have I don't have Trust Wallet. I don't have Trust Wallet. I don't have Trust Wallet. I'm trying to think if there's any more crypto specific ones. But I love I love me some crypto.com. So I really I really don't need another crypto yeah. home. I love crypto.com. So yeah, I think Coinbase, Robinhood, crypto.com, public. I think that's I think that's about it probably. Um so I guess the first time you wanna went in on Bitcoin was 2016. Mm-hmm. So have you been putting more in as time goes by or you just, you know, I put in? Um, yeah. So I'm a very much, I told y'all, I'm very- Scary. I'm scary. Yeah. To this day, I'm still a little scary. But so I, you know, I try to make, um, what's the word? I try to make Smart. calculated decisions okay. and investments. Uh-huh. Um, 
you know, slowly trying to increase the risk. But um, so, yeah, definitely throughout the pandemic, I'm um, definitely was definitely investing a lot, like within the last two years when everything was low. Yeah, I'm gonna put some, wow. I'm gonna drop some. Wow. Um, so definitely did a lot of that. But lately, like lately for sure, I've just been letting everything sit, yeah. you know, espe and especially because like I've been so on the go in the real estate world. If I don't have the time to like really research, see what's going on, then I don't want to play with it too much um, as far as like putting in more or like trying other new things. I'm just, I'm good with my stuff sitting, mm -hmm. holding my this business yeah, for a little yeah. bit. So yeah. Okay. Um, so what would you say to somebody who's looking to invest at the moment? In? In crypto or stocks or, you know, just get their feet wet mm -hmm. in the uh, investor space. What would you say to them? I would say, don't be, well, be a little scary. Be a little scary. And the the way that, that it's okay to be scary, like do research. Um, the number one rule is only invest like what you're comfortable losing. If you are not comfortable losing yeah, 1K, don't invest 1K. Yeah, yeah. The, the bottom, the number one rule is like whatever you invest, you have to be okay with chalking it up to the game. Yeah, yeah. Like that's yeah, just, yeah. that's, that's just number one. Teacher, bro. Every money that's in the stock <laughs> market. market. Like, yeah, it gone. it's not your money. It's gone. Money no it's more. not it's your, gone. you cannot have that emotional that attachment, attachment to it. Yeah. Exactly. You, you have to let it go anymore. because I have been hurt. I just told y'all 1K. <laughs> Listen, nah, for real. you know, you don't fell asleep yeah. on the trade. Listen, yeah. okay. I have been hurt. I've been hurt. So like you, you have to, you have to let go of that attachment. Um, so yeah, don't attach yourself to the money mm -hmm. and only invest what you're comfortable losing. Like what yeah. you're, what you're okay with saying, I can chalk it up to the game. And also know if you're okay spending 200, $300 on some sneakers, on some yeah. clothes, on material things that are not going to grow in value, that are not an asset, right. then you you've yeah. got it. You've got it mm -hmm. to invest. Like yeah. just the same way you chalked it up and somebody stepped on your sneaker <laughs> as soon as you went out. Like yeah. you can you can put that same two hundred, three hundred, and something exactly. that's going to grow mm -hmm. without you having to do nothing else. Yeah, it, you know, like it it brought me to this thought. Like when um some people were saying like, yo, if you would have um because everybody wanted the iPhone. Like back in high school, <laughs> like, like yo, if you would have like took that price, whatever number it was, and just of, bought the shares and instead. Brought, oh my good, you know how much, you know how many iPhones you could be buying now. <laughs> <laughs> like, you wouldn't even care. Yeah. You know what? At this point, I'm getting a flip phone because I don't want y'all to be able to reach me. Like exactly, like it's, it's so <laughs> crazy. No, like it's so crazy. Like the level of thinking that sometimes. Yeah. Like, the product that they're selling is more than the share price. Wow. And instead of buying the product that's going to lose value over time, why not just buy part of the company? Exactly. And let it grow or whatever. And you, it, it was Bro, it's, my it, it's, it's, it's a mindset. Yeah, it's, it's a mindset. I feel like, it is, it is. you know, from young, yeah. especially within our community, yeah. we're trapped. Yeah. We are. We're, we're very trapped, bro. It's a shame. It's, it's, it's a shame. It's not until you kind of untrap yourself yeah. to realize <laughs> exactly. how trapped you really were. It's the matrix. <laughs> it's so crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's so crazy. Um, so nah, since you're really into real estate, what would what would be some advice you would give to people who are looking to get into real estate? Mm. Uh, because I know I'm trying to get into investing myself. Yeah. Oh wait, I gotta for sure. Gotta yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so you know, me and a couple of the guys, um, you know, we formed a group LLC, mm -hmm. whatever. Okay, and okay, right now okay. We're just capital, um, for real estate, but we don't really know. Um, we're not you know, experts in this space, so you know, what advice would you give us or to anybody who's looking uh, to invest in real estate or just you know anything in general as far as real estate goes? So I would say. Um, I love that you said y'all have created an LLC. Mm -hmm. So one major thing that you can do with that is build business credit mm -hmm. and use that as a um, use that as a way to get capital to get property, like all of that stuff. Um, so make sure that 
just in general, like just make sure y'all are definitely building business credit with the LLC. Um, I would say picking, it'll be important to like pick an area, a stream, a way that mm -hmm. y'all are wanting to invest. Mm -hmm. So like whether that's a fix and flip, whether that's wholesaling or that's buying and holding, almost anything that you will purchase at this time, well, the the real estate market right now is very- It's crazy. Oh yeah. It's, it's, it's disappointing. And it's crazy because um, I told you, um, you know, I think I'm gonna buy my first crib in Maryland. Yeah. That's where I plan on, you know. Mm. Oh, Maryland is so good uh, right now. I'm gonna be hitting you up. Please hit me up. Um, and my price range is M. Mm. My first house. Oh, we M. out there. Yeah. <laughs> I know, just you know, the neighborhood. You, you know, like the gated community? I want maybe PG County. That's I got you. That's my place. Yeah. That's my place. Yeah. I got you. I got you. I, I got you. That's where all the uh, oh, the wealthy oh, African Americans yeah. live. Shout out to PG <laughs> County. Shout I love it. Live that's the wealthiest. Um, that's the wealthiest. Yes, yeah, yeah. that's the wealth. I yeah. love y'all. I love me some PG County. I literally, I literally. Work, live, play, worship. I love PG, PG County. County. Mm -hmm. Shout out to y'all. Um, so yeah, PG County is amazing. Lots yeah, of value. You up. Lots sure. of value for when I'm sure. I'm ready. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Thanks. Um, but yeah, so as far as invest, like getting investment properties with the LLC, I would say the best thing that you could actually do right now, especially in this market, but always for investing is like, don't be afraid of a property that needs a little work. Like those are the ones, those are the gems a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. So like, because like it's an eyesore to everybody else, that's probably an opportunity for you. As long as it's nothing crazy. Like, you know, obviously if it has like bad structural um, or like water damage, you know, you might not be willing to make that kind of um, fix and commitment to it. But like, otherwise, especially if it's like cosmetic stuff, um, definitely, don't be so quick to turn away for prop from properties, especially in today's market, because um, you can you can really turn it around and like get some great value for it. Mm -hmm. um, because there's just there's not enough stuff on the market for there's not enough homes on the market for as many people who are wanting to buy. Everybody in our age range right now, all the millennials um, and like older. What is what is what is the older? What's the generation like? Right. I ordered in us. Yeah. Uh, Whatever. <laughs> Whatever they're called. Gen Z. Gen Z is below us. Yeah. Gen Z is below. Is Gen X. X. Gen X. Are we Gen X? I have no idea. Whatever. Wow. Us <laughs> and you know our our counterparts a little above us are like the number one mm -hmm. buyers like on the market right now, and so mm -hmm. we're all kind of we're all kind of like looking within the same price range. And that's like another reason why there's so much competition. So much there's not enough on the market and it, it's seller's world. Yeah. Um, even with the interest rates peaking, I feel like it, it's going to dwindle out some buyers, but it's not going to do anything as far as like that, the inventory on the market right now. So again, I say all that to say like, don't be afraid of ugly properties. Mm -hmm. um, and then just for not even like investors, but for people who are just still looking to buy their first home, that rule goes for y'all as well. Like you definitely want to be looking way below your budget. So if you're approved for let's say 350, yeah. then you definitely want to be looking like 300 and like that's real because you want to have wiggle room to be able to offer more in this yeah. competitive market. Yeah. Um, and, and the houses like, because, because everybody played into this market, everybody played a role in letting these houses get so high. Mm -hmm. So like the appraisals, like you're probably, you're probably going to get that for the house, um, when you offer more, but, um, Oh my gosh, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm all over the place. What I'm trying to say is um, shop below your budget and don't be afraid of ugly houses. You can use the FHA 203k loan mm -hmm. to renovate an ugly house and make it exactly, not exactly, but make it pretty on the inside. Yeah. You can roll, that loan will allow you to make renovations that are approved 
Like you have to get an approved contractor to make those changes and they get like paid throughout the so, process. Is, yeah. So is that after like is that after you buy the house that you can use it or is it all together? So you this is so you will get under contract and you get an approved um contractor that like and what I'm saying approved by the um the lender? By the lender mm-hmm. who like is going to connect with the the federal, yeah. federal, uh, whatever the federal, y'all, I cannot think of the word. But anyway, like the federal housing people to make sure that this contractor is authorized to do those FHA specific, oh, FHA specific yeah. loan um, renovations. Yeah. So um, you will, they will make the renovations before you get to closing. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, so they are, they have to like, so say, you're getting, I don't know, like the kitchen redone and like the flooring redone. They will break the renovations into stages mm-hmm. and get each stage approved. Oh, I see. So does that extend the closing date? That's going to extend the closing date. So you close like at the end of the renovations. Mm-hmm. But again, for properties that are short sale or that are already bank owned or like owned by an LLC or somebody like if it's not like a a normal seller who like needs the money because they're trying to buy a house somewhere else, like then you're going to, you're going to, they're going to be okay with that wiggle room most of the time. And so that's how you can kind of, these are just different like ways that you can think outside of the box to win in this market because it's really hard to. So, you know, don't be afraid of a little bit of a fixer upper that you might not even need a FHA 203k loan, just small stuff, painting, whatever. Like make it a fun weekend DIY project or, um, you know, use that loan to help you get nice renovations in a house. Would, would you advise someone to, to wait or to just go right in? In this market? In this other market, yeah. uh, to, be be with, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to be honest with y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with that question myself. And I'll, full transparency, I was under contract for a beautiful two-bed, two-bath condo in December. Mm-hmm. And... The, like before Christmas and the contract fell through because it was a gated community. Y'all, it was so nice. The contract <laughs> fell through. <laughs> the contract fell through um, because the um, the condo community, too many people were delinquent 60 days mm. over their payment. And so my um, lender is not going to, you got to do it. It was a condo. So you have to do a, a condo questionnaire that the lender does, check off the boxes, make sure everything's good. You know, they're giving me this money for this loan. We got to check this community. So there was way too, they were over the percentage of people delinquent over 60 days. Mm-hmm. And um, the condo uh, association didn't have enough money at the threshold they were supposed to in their wow. reserve. And I was like, because y'all don't got y'all stuff together, I can't have this beautiful house. And I, it was either I was going to have to put 10% down to get it. Or I was going to, um, yeah, I was going to have to put 10% down to get it. And so in thinking about that too, I'm like, if later I wanted to sell this, would I run into that same problem? Yeah. And like, I, 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 I'm struggling now looking at the market because I'm like, interest rates have way, yeah. this is December, mm-hmm. interest rates have way gone up. Yeah, the president said he was going to do it. He said he was going to do it. So interest rates have gone up. Um, housing prices are gone up and are not going down. Mm-hmm. Same for the interest rates. Like we might see, you know, things are at like five. So maybe we'll see like 4.4 at some dip in the year, but it's not like, it's definitely not going back down. It's yeah. like, you might, we might get a little dip for a week and then it's going to go back up. But so basically from here, everything is up. Whatever your budget was last year to <laughs> shop for a home, it ain't the same. So it's just like, <sighs> the answer is always going to be, Buy a home when you're ready and can afford to do so. Mm. And not a day later. Yeah. Because I truly, and I truly mean that, like, always buy a home when you and only you are ready. But um, but make sure that you take the steps to do that. Because renting, like, don't keep doing that. You're paying the price of a mortgage when you can have something in your name um, that will... That is an asset that will right, begin right. to build that generational wealth for you. Um, and in this market, you're building crazy equity. So like exactly. now is always the time, but as long as as long as like you're really ready to. Yeah. But don't wait. Like if you're actually ready, your finances are in order, do not wait. Like 
And if it's not your time, do everything that you can to be responsible to get ready. Because why wouldn't you want to be ready to buy a home? Like, make sure that you're getting ready if you're not ready. Yeah. Yeah. No, I definitely agree. Because I I think it's like finding the right home, the right price for you. And like, kind of don't be pressured into, um, you know, just getting any home. Funny thing you mentioned about... uh, that that fell out of contract so i was like i was in the middle of um so like this market is crazy i like, know shayler i know like, it's it's so it's so crazy because when I, w- I was looking for a duplex in new jersey that's what i want yeah. and that's the that's the other thing about we, yeah we gonna i'm gonna let you go we're gonna, we gonna get back I, to it i was i was looking i was looking for a duplex in new jersey and i found one really nice era up and coming like it's the yes, equity. the area was up and coming. Uh, the equity was gonna be crazy. So then I I seen the price. Um, I'm like, okay, cool. Then I looked at the surrounding homes or whatever. Um, I think the home was listed for like 169, but other homes were selling 180. To mm-hmm. I'm like, yes, yes, immediate, immediate equity. equity. <laughs> immediate Bam. Equity. So then I t- I tell my realtor, I'm like, this is the one. We putting it in now. And then she's like. They received multiple offers. Yep. So now you got to stand next so to like, theirs. I'm like, oh, okay, okay, 169, 169, okay, I'll do 175. Mm-hmm. Didn't get the deal because mm. somebody else. And you know what's crazy? A lot of people are literally just doing cash offers mm. and beating out like normal people who yeah. are trying to use FHA or right. even conventional. Right. Like if you are giving cash, you're. <sighs> Cash buyers and corporations are literally buying up everything, yeah. which is also impacting the inventory for like normal, everyday, working hard Americans trying to like get on the ladder of owning property. They're grabbing everything up before you have an opportunity to. Yeah. And it really, it's really unfortunate, like, because it, it, it really feels like if you, it really feels like you missed the wave. Yeah. <laughs> or if you don't hurry up and start swimming, like yeah. you're gonna end up back on shore. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's helpful for like existing homeowners. Oh yeah, the equity. Y'all I'm good. Like, Y'all good. Like, don't go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> don't go anywhere. Just stay put. Because <laughs> like the, the market right now, like the sellers market, my equity and my has shot up. Like, yes. Has. I'm like, yo, yes. Keep buying overpriced, but like, but as like, um. Like a buyer, it's been really, yeah, it's been really stressful because the um my deal it, it didn't go through, fell through in the contract, and and that's like like first going in like um like first going into real estate, you don't understand like the losses that you like you could potentially take. Mm-hmm. Like my first um first of all, I paid for the inspection. Inspection was like six seven hundred dollars. Same. Then I, then I had to pay for the appraisal. That was like five hundred. Mm-hmm. Then the inspection told me like, oh, you should hire another specialty person to come look at it. So then I paid another six, seven hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So and then I ended up not even getting the homes. It was all lost. You know what wow. I'm saying? So it's like it's it's, it's wild. Yeah. It's like um, expensive pain. Expensive pain. Expensive pain. It, but you know what? You gonna have your victory. Yes. But it's 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 really wild out here. Um. I'm trying to think if I said that thought that I said I was going to come back to. Maybe you said I did. The, the duplex in New Jersey. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So that's the thing. Like, ideally, I really want a duplex. Mm-hmm. But when I tell you they are so far and few in Maryland, mm-hmm. in PG County, mm-hmm. in Montgomery County, and it's like if you have them already, you're not selling it. I'm never going to, mm-hmm. it's never going to be for sale. Mm-hmm. I, I, it, and I for, se- for se- yes, yeah. everything is in Baltimore and everything is in DC. So I'm like, you know what? Um, if I can, if I can come across and get something, I don't, nothing to Baltimore or DC. (laughs) I don't want to live in those cities Mm -hmm. particularly, Mm -hmm. but I will, um, I will for a a, for a smart real estate move. So, Mm -hmm. and that's where the duplexes are at because right. We want a house hack, pay that mortgage for me, please. Okay. Like that's the way to go. If you can. But, um, you know, if you can't, single family still cool. Equities are going up either way. I know Baltimore killer. Baltimore oh, is, whew. No, Baltimore is hot, 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 hot. Yeah. There's like so many vacant properties, um, so many just multifamily opportunities. Sure. And Baltimore, 
Baltimore is so rich, honestly, in its history and its culture. It's a port that's still like it's a major, major port. And like it's going to continue to bring jobs and they're slowly building it up. They have amazing home buying um opportunity like the Baltimore the city of Baltimore like they have amazing like grants and stuff for homeowners and like true Baltimoreans to really get in on buying back the block so like it really is they're really doing a good job I think with um the opportunity out there so it's like if you're in Baltimore already like you should for sure be going for the opportunities that are there to purchase a home. And even if you're outside of Baltimore, like you can benefit as well, but make sure that you take care and build up the community. If you're coming from outside and going to do that. You know, another, another place where like, there's a lot of duplexes in Jersey. Is Atlantic City. Yes. And you know what? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, and that's the you thing I think about you. all the yeah. time. Yo, that's a good, listen, I mean, y'all listen, right here. Yo, I mean, yo, you are That ain't nothing but a 40, man. I be saying it, but no, but anyway. But I was, no, I was just going to say that I've really been like, do I need to relocate to Jersey to just try to snatch up some properties and then take myself back down there because mm. Mm. like, you know, price wise, I could probably do stuff a little bit quicker yeah, yeah, yeah. up here than I can down there mm. too. So, mm. um, and, and there's more duplex house hacking opportunities for sure. Um, oh, yeah, for in, sure. in this area yeah. than in the capital. The, the only, my only reservation is what Atlantic city, trust <laughs> me, it's so many, like it's so many, duplexes that's it's, give me the reservation it's, it's, it's like it's so many my only reservation is that the way they do business down there the economy mm. because if the main focus is through casinos I knew you was about to say that hotels mm. and you know things like that what happened to COVID and I, I just don't feel it a recession proof yeah area so, okay area. That's, okay that's my only I that's can my only reservation for that because that makes yeah. sense. That's yeah. that's that's valid. That's valid. That's my that's my only reservation. Like, yeah, there's there's definitely opportunity down there, but I I don't know. Like, I, that's that's super valid. I didn't think risky. about that. It's definitely risky. So I'm I'm more like, but what? Philly, Philly now. Philly, Philly is just as hot as Baltimore. Philly is. I will say I, I ain't gonna lie. Baltimore might might be a tad hotter, but oh, Philly okay. Philly is 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 yeah. just as good. Philly Philly is booming. Philly is booming. I think I just need to get out of that. Because I've just been in New Jersey, that I need to start expanding my. Yeah. That's really what it. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Because so I've been looking like near like Camden and so. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, like that's that good. Cherry yeah. Hill, that that kind of close to Philadelphia kind of mm -hmm. area because that's that's where I feel like this is going to be. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, but that's I, good. AC, that's where it, it's a <laughs> lot of, and I've and I've heard like other big investors is going down in AC and taking them all, but I, I just don't. If I will say now, I feel like it's sounding like Atlantic City would be a good place if you're comfortable buying and holding and like knowing that it might not bring you money right away, yeah. but there's going to be ebbs and flows and then eventually probably, yeah. hopefully, hopefully a solid flow at some point. Yeah. But like, if you're okay with a buy and hold property for it to really like come up over time and yeah. give you benefit, it still might be worth looking yeah, at. Yeah, I, I don't vacation know. Yeah, summer like you're gonna have seasons yeah, of like, like Airbnb type. Yeah, like, yeah, you're gonna have seasons yeah. where it's like, whoo, it's it's, it's hot, yeah. and yeah. then you might have summers, a slow season in the winter. Like, summers will bring you. Yeah, if, yeah. If you if you doing like the the rental like the the renting space, but like I need personally, I need a plan from Atlantic City. Like this is because when you like, because I know I've gone to AC a lot, casinos and things like that, but. When you start going out to where people live and you see how they, it's crazy out there, like, but, and, and that's the way that that city is making money. And so, you know, listen, I need another plan. Like, what's the tax? I see what you're saying. Is? You need them to, I, I got you. Yeah. They're focused on the beach. Exactly. Entertainment, and they're exactly. not doing much in the city. Exactly. The city is very like kind of like slower, yeah, like and that. like they're not really upcoming. So exactly. you're trying to make sure that overall the town is going, the the, the town and the people are like carrying right. into it, it, building up the community. Is being built exactly. Up. Wow. Overall, but not like just residential entertainment. Side? Yeah, it's residential crazy. side. AC is literally like you go down there. It's kind of like split in two halves. Yeah. And city part where everybody's at. 
It's cool. Yeah. You go to where? Out on the outskirts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like, y'all got to put the same energy towards the rest of the community, not just the beach town. Yeah, I got you. Like what they're doing in, in Camden specifically, they're growing that out. They're they're mm-hmm. giving taxes yeah. to business. If you look at to, because I went to Rutgers Camden, that business district they put hotels in there. Nice. They you know other Campbell Soup, every, Subaru, <laughs> Campbell like all, Soup, all different type of things. Like I need to see like okay, yeah, like this one falls. This one I need. That know, makes other, sense. That yeah, makes sense. Like calculated I, risk. You gotta yeah, calculate exactly. it. So yeah, like, but. And AC though, there's a lot of cheap. Like it's, it, it's, it's a lot. It, it, it's it's very tempting. It's triplex, triplexes, quad. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, do, I'm a look more into the AC area. Kind of like see what the history and stuff was like, and if it seems like if there's any, you know what you could do. Look in the, uh, look at the community development plans mm. and see if there's anything because they make those plans for like uh, ten years out. How do how do I um? I've been trying to Google. I was gonna say, Google. Yeah. Like you gotta, you probably literally need to say like Atlantic City Community Development Plan twenty twenty yeah. to blah blah blah. But I'll do some work on that too to see if I can find something for you. But that could be a telling point for if they even have plans to maybe yeah. phase it out or if they not they haven't even started. Yeah, because like searching around this area for duplex is hard. Yes. Atlantic City or Violent or Bridge, mm-hmm. Bridgerton, but like those areas is quote unquote rough or like declining property value and things like that. Even though like if you want to, I, I feel like it's good to buy property in a working class, especially if like, mm-hmm. you want to rent it out and things like that. But like, I don't know, like I, I need to see a plan how we're going to move. Yeah. I need a recession proof. I, I, I got need, you. Yeah, I got like, you. I, don't, I don't need to be. No, nah, that's real. Yeah, like I, I need something else. Yeah. But, um. Yeah. So to cap it off, um, you know you're on all things money podcast. Facts, and, facts. Um, <laughs> we like to ask. Well, going forward, we're gonna ask. Yeah. You know, uh, our special guest a question. Uh-huh. Um. So the question is, you know, what's money to you? Mm. What's money to me? <sighs> money is time and freedom. Uh-huh. Period. Like uh-huh. that's yeah, that's my that's, soul. That's solid. Yeah. That's that's it. Money is time and freedom. That's all I want for me and my family. Time and freedom. That's it. That's all. Yeah. That's that's yeah. And I want it. For, I want it for me, my family, and everybody that I that I, that's in my reach that I can help get to it. That's it. Yeah. Respect. Respect. Yeah. Options. Options. That's Options. all. I just wanna Options. you know. Options. I wanna choose. <laughs> exactly. Do I want to do this today or... Or not. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> do I want to go to Dubai today yeah. or not? <laughs> I'm trying to get there, you know? Options. It's really options. Yeah. Stress-free. Damn, Stress-free, beautiful. soft yeah. life. Soft life for the girls. Soft life. <laughs> soft life. Yeah. Nobody I mean, wants a hard life, bro. Yeah. Just want a soft life. We glorify life. our community. We oh, my gosh. The, the, the hard life. Yeah. I don't want to struggle first. Wait, it, it's not cute about it's it. Nothing. nothing. It's, it's not, not cute about it. It's nothing hot about it. It's not sexy. It's not like, yeah, all my life yeah. I had to know. You didn't have to, bro. The book was right there. Come on. we Get in the rooms. Get in the rooms. You don't have to. Get in the rooms. Exactly. It's, it's, nothing, it's nothing wrong for one more. It's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. One more and one and better. Yeah, honestly. Straight that's, up, bro. that's it. Dang, well, that's it. You know? Yeah, that's, that's all. episode eight. Episode eight. <laughs> um, thank you, Naya. Thank y'all for, for having me. Up. I had and so also, much fun. I want to say this. You know, um, we all went to high school together. Thanks. And, you know, for me, I love to see, you know, yeah. black women yeah. um, grow yeah. as far as finances, you know, um, and trying to get to the money. It's, you know, let, let me jump in real quick. Okay. Like, you know, what's crazy is that, like, sometimes, like, I'll be like personally, I'll be on Instagram or Twitter and I'll be seeing some things. I'll be like, yo, people are not feeling what I'm what I'm saying. Yeah. And then why I see like <laughs> Naya too, I'm like, yo. She gets it. She gets it. <laughs> like whenever, she gets like, whenever it. I say something, I'm like, yo. She gets if, it. If, she gets it. If nobody gets it, I know that. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I'm like, yo, it's like going down this path is it can be long, like it can be long. Very long. Frustration. Very like, lonely. No one really knows what like you're talking about and 
you seem like crazy. Mm-hmm. Like everybody, like, oh, he's talking, or he's just talking. Mm-hmm. And stuff. But like, yo, like when I feel like you know who's on your wavelength. Like, exactly. Okay. Yeah, like you know, exactly. like okay, this person, she, they, they get it. Yeah. Like yo, like, honestly, on my Twitter, I know I be ranting yeah, sometimes. Yeah. If there's two people. <laughs> That I know that's gonna get it. Yeah, it's y'all too. Yeah, and y'all too. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. I'm gonna get it. Between. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, what I thought. Exactly. I try not to say too much. I was gonna say yeah. you don't be. Too much. <laughs> I was just gonna say it. Say you don't much. be saying too much, but I know exactly <laughs> what you're saying every time. I know it every time, and I'll be wanting to text you, and I'll be like, yeah. I'm gonna because I, I I I mess with Delhi all the time, but I'll be like, I'm gonna leave him alone, but I know yeah. exactly what he's saying right, right. now. So, you know, I'm happy. I'm proud to see it. Um, I hope other um, women, you know, see what you're doing and try to emulate it. Um, but yeah, keep pushing the envelope, man. I appreciate y'all. You know, I love y'all. Thanks for this easy, platform. You know, in, in this world, too. Exactly. Especially, you know, being a black woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, a woman at that, but a black yeah, woman, yeah. especially, you know what I mean? Um, to really, you know, push the envelope and. Going for it. so I'm really happy to see you know right. people that I would say that like, I grew up with yeah, yeah, you know yeah, turn yeah. into something yeah. positive. So yeah, shout out to you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna appreciate it. <laughs> Cheers. I love y'all, and I'm super proud of y'all too. So tell us where um, people can find you. How to find your journal? Yes. So I'm on Instagram at at I am Naya with six underscores. You're not gonna have to type in all the underscores. It's I. A-M-N-A-Y-A, six underscores. And then my affirmations journal is at Notes from Naya on Instagram as well. Um, so yeah, if you go to my Instagram, you'll see all my real estate stuff as well. But thank y'all so much. Nice. nice. I time. think even, um, I know two people that are looking to buy houses. So yeah. if you're trying to buy a yes. house in Maryland, you know anybody uh-huh. trying to buy a house in Maryland, this is who you want to hit Please up. Please hit uh-huh. me up. Um, I got y'all. Go to, she'll give you the blueprint. You know, oh, okay. even if you're not sure of buying it, you just yes, just start the conversation it. because, yeah, like yeah. I was saying to Shayler, if you're not ready now, your goal should be to get ready. So we can definitely talk about the steps and what you can do to build yourself up to be ready to buy a home. Thanks, thanks, thanks. I wish you was in Jersey. I know. Oh, I, man. I I really um. I'm a Maryland has reciprocity with Georgia, Pennsylvania, and then like I gotta do it for the home state. So um, I'm a I'm a get around. I'm a get around to grabbing up some more uh, license yeah, in other states. I, I haven't um, had a, a South Jersey black. You know what? And I really haven't seen one either. Um, there's a few. Um, I know one. In North Jersey that are yeah, that yeah, are no, killing no, the game, yeah, yeah, but know. yeah. So I might have to. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna have to bring it up and down the highway. Yeah, we'll I know see. One in um, like Morristown area. Yeah, yeah. I, I know one in like North North Jersey. Right. South of Guyana. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Sounds Episode good. eight <laughs> locked in. Uh huh. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having thank me. You, thank you. Mm-hmm. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all that, all that. All that. If you have any questions, at all, DM us. We'll, you know what I mean. We'll talk about it. Yeah, for sure. Right. Episode eight.